Drag racing fan, let's take a look back at the NHRA Gator Nationals, the 51st edition through the lens and thoughts of yours truly, the Monday Morning Racer. All of it brought to you by strutmasters.com, which is offering air suspension for trucks now. Check them out. You're about to check out Monday Morning Racers in review on the Gator Nationals. Next. <laughs> In March, when the Gator Nationals is normally held here in 2020 this year, we definitely thought and wondered if we would be back at all in 2020. But the NHRA, and congratulations to them, kudos to them, they got the Gator Nationals in at a new scheduled time in the month of September for the 51st edition. And I definitely think it's a Gator Nationals to remember. Well, look, we're going to dive in my first and biggest story, the throttle whack. Thank you, Leverage Racing, for the double throttle whack. And in fact, my top story is just that, the throttle wax. Everybody says regularly and routinely they want more throttle wax back in the Nitro Pit. And the Gator Nationals felt like some sort of throwback event to the early 90s and 80s because there were throttle wax aplenty throughout the pit. So the Leverage f family, their race team, they provided their double throttle whack, but it wasn't just them. No, no. Paul Smith, the wily old veteran driver and tuner, he was tuning and wrenching on two funny cars, Paul Smith racing and Paul Richards racing funny cars, and well, he dished out the double throttle whack on both of them. Alexis DeGioria is doing the throttle whack. There were others in the pit, such as Terry Haddock with his funny car doing the <laughs> In other drag news at the 51st Gator Nationals, and again, I hope that I'm able to bring a perspective that's different from what the NHRA or other major media outlets are going to provide. Well, I was able to catch a special moment. In fact, I counted myself, and I use the term photographer loosely, myself and two other photographers are the only ones that caught this moment. I'm strolling down the pits, doing my thing, practicing with an actual camera, a Canon T5i Rebel, and I spotted Leah Pruitt's top field dragster running the red eye wrap, and I think that's a good looking car. I really enjoy the red eye wraps on Matt Hagen's car and Leah Pruitt's car. So I was like, I'm gonna shoot the top field, get some photos, and lo and behold, Don Garlitz, Big Daddy himself, he walks into Leah Pruitt's pit. And I was able to catch him, well, checking out the car. It's a canopy car. Don ran a canopy car. He's looking at it, seeing how far things have advanced. And later on, Leah herself comes out, and they're able to have a nice moment, some laughs, check the car out, talking about the drag racing life. So it was pretty cool to see this Living legend, Big Daddy Don Garlitz, and this bright star of the modern day, Leah Pruitt, talking, conversing all over the joys, the thrills, and the technology of drag racing. It was cool to see. <laughs> Be 
Beyond this cool moment that I was able to capture, something that I noticed that I definitely want to point out is that the Gator Nationals was a success. And a success from this standpoint, the crowd. The crowd was a capacity crowd under the particular COVID-19 restrictions that the area was in. It was a great feeling national event. It had that national event feel that other events such as Indy 1 or Indy 2 really didn't have because of the amount of fans that were on site, on location at the Gator Nationals. And folks enjoyed a great show. Plenty of throttle wax, as I said earlier. Plenty of great side-by-side -side racing. But you can definitely tell that people wanted their drag racing. And I say that to say this. If you were one of those individuals stating, hey, cut the season off, don't go back to racing, well, you were wrong. The NHRA has got it in. The NHRA has figured it out. And it has been successful to race at Indy 1, 2, 3, U.S. Nationals, now moving beyond Indy and racing in Florida for the Gator Nationals. And people want their drag racing. I think drag racing at the NHRA level is alive and well. And I think that the break that we got made some folks a bit more appreciative of NHRA drag racing. Is the NHRA perfect? No. They've got a lot they need to work on. But I want to say this. Congratulations to you, the NHRA, for in this challenging time, having races and standing on this principle, as it were, that we are going to have fans, and if we don't have fans, we're not racing. I appreciate that now more than I did when I was at Gainesville in March. Congratulations, NHRA. And thank you for making sure that there can be fans in the stands to watch professional drag racing. My last point in other drag news before taking a view at the classes individually is this, the conditions. It was hot, it was humid, definitely a different time than the typical March date racing in September and it presented challenging conditions for the teams and tuners there in Gainesville, Florida. Just how challenging was it? Well, to give you an example, the Leverage Racing Top Fuel Team, at the end of Q1, they set number five on the qualifying board. And by the end of Q2, there was only two qualifying sessions. They, in fact, qualified ninth on the board. So to give you an idea of those who did well in qualifying and those who did not do well in qualifying, to give you the spectrum of those who navigated the conditions well and those who did not. Let's take a listen to Doug Foley and Justin Ashley on their qualifying efforts on a challenging Gator Nationals track. Monday morning racer here at the Gator Nationals, the 51st one and caught up with Doug Foley. Look, Doug, a classic line in the A-team by Hannibal Smith was, I love it when a plan comes together and the plan is coming together. Talk to me about where y'all been and where you're at right now here at the Gator Nationals. It, it, it is coming together. I mean, this is a team that has been kind of work in progress over the last three races. Um, Indy really worked well for us, qualified well, really had a car underneath us, and we came in here with some momentum. Of course, going out there with the, the heat and all the stuff we had first round was, uh, was difficult. We smoked a tire similar to a lot of the other cars, but uh, you know, uh, I've raced a lot with Doug Cook, I can tell you that. 
and uh, I could also tell you this is the best crew I've ever had, bar none. And uh, when you put those two together, um, he will figure out how to get to the finish line for sure. Um, well, you've done that. You got to the finish line in Q2 with a 386. Pretty good for these conditions. Qualified fifth. Talk to me about having that type of blast in these conditions and at the Gator Nationals. It is, you know, I mean, when things don't go well first run, you're sitting in a car thinking, okay, I have to be ready for anything. Pedal it, do this, do that. And when it rides like a Cadillac, you're like, what the hell? I wasn't supposed to do that. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it's a little loose out there, but I mean, for the most part, a great run. The team did an unbelievable job. You know, the pressure for a smaller team like us, we love the two qualifiers, okay? Because it, uh, honestly, at the end of the weekend, that's a couple less runs we had to make. It really fits into our budget uh, constraints. But this is, you know, a place like this, every team out here would have said, oh, would have really liked to have a third one, you know? So uh, for the most part, we're really pleased. Um, and, uh, you know, we kind of feel like right now, our focus now is, is starting to go rounds, you know? Uh, we believe this is probably our last race of the year unless we find some funding. But, you know, and we have one hell of a team going into next year, so we're really excited about that. But uh, um, now it's really about starting to turn on some wind lights and, and, and starting to prepare for next year in that phase. All right, so the Foley Lewis Top Gear Dragster is running well, empowered by Redline Oil and Strutmasters.com. Doug, we're here at the Gator Nationals, but it's not March, it's September. <laughs> obviously, obviously, the conditions are different. With everything that's been going on in 2020 and now coming to the Gator Nationals, which would be counted as like one of the big four, a crown jewel event, does it still feel that way or does it feel different? I think everything from the time we took the awning down here in March has felt entirely different for probably anybody who lives in the U.S., okay? So I don't think anybody could say, oh yeah, this was, this was a typical year. Um, so it's different. Uh, me and Tim appreciate the fact that we can come out here and play with these guys and race a car. And, uh, and I can tell you without Chip, and Redline and all those people, we wouldn't be here. This would just not be a possible dream for us. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a weird year. It is what it is. We're glad we're making progress. I believe and hope, and I'm sure everybody else does, that next year will be a lot different and we'll go back to some normality. Um, and if so, if we have a car underneath us and we have a crew and a team and, and Doug Cook's already committed to coming back next year, I think, uh, I think 2021 is gonna be a good year for us. Folks, that's Doug Foley here at the Gator Nationals, and the plan is coming together. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Monday morning racer here at the Gator Nationals caught up with the one and only Justin Ashley. Justin, I know this place is special to you, but maybe not this particular day with the conditions and how qualifying went. Talk to me about it. Yeah, this race always has a special place in my heart. Uh, I was fortunate enough to win here in a top alcohol dressing class in 2017, but today was a little bit of a struggle, and you know what? That's all right. You know, I have complete confidence in this team and Aaron Brooks and the Davis Motorsports guys that we're going to be ready to go tomorrow and put our best foot forward. Today we went out there and gave it our all, two runs, and the truth of the matter is, is our first two runs, the early numbers were really good. In fact, on that last pass, we are headed straight to the top. We just couldn't go A to B. But, you know, we'll be ready to go for tomorrow. That's all part of racing. That's all part of the process. Just really proud of these guys. And we know we have a really good Strutmasters.com, Auto Shocker, Cotto dragster and we'll be ready to go you know they say pop goes the weasel but on that last run it was pop goes the parachute so i've got to ask something like that happens what happens internally with a team to make sure those things do not happen again yeah so when things like that happen it's obviously a little bit disappointing but the first thought that goes through your mind is okay what can we do for that so we've been sitting around going over a few things and uh we'll make a few minor adjustments to it tomorrow and do everything we possibly can to ensure that it doesn't happen moving forward. Definitely doesn't want it to happen moving forward. And moving forward here at the Gator Nationals, definitely you got a good team and an opportunity to win it. But hey, let's take a look forward to St. Louis. This team can look forward to, uh, well, some pizza. Talk to me about that deal with Zizzo. <laughs> That's right, so I'm from New York. So to me, the ultimate prize is pizza, right? It doesn't really get any better than that. So uh, at the Summer Nationals during the final round, I had a little side bet with TJ Zizzo that uh, whoever won the race, the loser had to buy the other team pizza. So he'll be bringing us pizza in St. Louis. He was going around taking individual orders. So I want Sicilian, I want regular, I want pepperoni, whatever it takes to, uh, to feed these hungry guys behind me. So uh, my hat's off to TJ. 
and uh, good guy, good team. It'll be a fun time. Definitely. TJ, thank you for getting orders, but why did you not get mine? <laughs> so, Justin, you have got a lot of names on this car from strutmasters.com, Menards, Manscaped. I can't remember them all, but you do. But you also added a name onto the car this week. Pretty cool deal with a book and a ministry. Yeah, we did. We were fortunate enough to add on Pastor Daryl Scott. Uh, Pastor Daryl Scott is just an awesome guy, a uh, God-fearing man, which is something that I always respect and appreciate. And He has a new book out there called Nothing to Lose. So if you're looking for a good read, uh, you know that's one that I highly suggest. You can go on Amazon and check it out. Fortunate to have him on board with us this weekend uh, and excited and looking forward to uh, watching him go down the track tomorrow at over 300 miles per hour. Well, folks, Nitro crew members and drivers can certainly read, especially Justin Ashley. Thank you, man, for your time. Hope you do well here at the Gators. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, guys, a quick fan tip for you if you're ever in Gainesville, Florida, and you're hungry and looking for somewhere good to eat, the Monday Morning Racer has tried these places out, and you'll be good to go for some good food. First up, Mexican food, La Posadita. Great Mexican food, thoroughly enjoyed it. Look, you know the place is good when they pick up the phone and they don't understand you speaking English and the next person they come to the phone doesn't quite understand you speaking English and they got to find the third person. So that's either you can't speak English or the food is that good. And let me tell you, it was that good. Definitely a Mexican restaurant doing Mexican food right. La Posadita, check it out. And for an Italian-American flair, downtown Gainesville, the pizza. This place is in an interesting part of town, very happening, jivey part of town, and they have got some great wood-fired pizza. It was done right. Got the carnivore-style pizza, very similar to a Supreme, but with a little extra meat, and you could tell everything was fresh, it was cooked right, it was good. The pizza if you're looking for some good grub in downtown Gainesville. Now, let's look at the classes individually, class in session. Top Fuel, in Top Fuel, Steve Torrance in a beautiful Don Garlitz Big Daddy tribute car wins the 51st Gator Nationals. And let's take a look right now as he marched through the field to pick up that Gators Wally. <laughs> is obviously a big deal. It's really one of the big four. It's a crown jewel event and has historically been so for a while. But honestly, even though it's big winning the Gator Nationals and it's big 
even so more, winning the Gator Nationals in a Don Garlitz Big Daddy tribute car, I think the biggest moment in Top Fuel was what happened in round one with Doug Coletta. Let's take a look at it right now. <laughs> With Doug Coletta losing round one, as you just saw, that has changed the point scenario drastically, and it has certainly tightened up as it has slowly been marching to a tighter battle in top fuel for the past several races. In fact, Steve Torrance now goes to the number one spot. Doug Coletta is second in points, 22 behind. Leah Pruitt is behind in third with only 33 points behind first, and then it is Billy Torrance in fourth, and Justin Ashley rounding out the top five. So top fuel, definitely, we're looking at a battle right now that is shaping up to be a fight between Steve Torrance, Doug Coletta, and as I've been saying for a while now, she's got her best shot ever at a NHRA championship, Leah Pruitt. How about those fabulous floppers, the funny cars? They were in competition at the Gator Nationals. Ron Caps wins the 51st edition of the Gator Nationals and does it on Ron Tobler's birthday of all days. And he also did it while blowing up and doing a uh, skid through his own oil and planting it perfectly as if he meant to do it. All of that. Let's take a look as I saw it on the Monday Morning Racer camera. <laughs> Points battle still has the same players. Nonetheless, there's been some moving, and you see the points battle tighten up in Funny Car between Don Schumacher drivers. So Jack Beckman leads the points currently, and behind him we have Matt Hagen only four behind. Tommy Johnson is third, being 57 points behind Jack Beckman. But notice that Ron, with this win and a win at Indy and a little bit more consistency is now fourth in points and within a margin that with just few races left, maybe, just possibly, he can make a late championship run and get, well, a deuce of championships to go along with his Hall of Fame career. Now, fifth place in the Mustang. Not represented very well so far this year. It's all Don Schumacher is Tim Wilkerson. Still several races to go. Never know what Tim or Tasca might be able to do. They've got good cars. Hopefully somebody will break through and challenge the Don Schumacher cars in Funny Car. 
Pro stock was well represented at the Gator Nationals. Though the fuel cars only had 15 cars per class, the pro stockers had well over the full field trying to make it into the show. And the driver that won the Gator Nationals over all the competition that showed up for this prestigious event is Alex Laughlin. He reclaimed some lost glory from last year's Gator Nationals and what a great rebound after the U.S. Nationals fiasco of round one and the electrical bug showing its ugly head at the most inopportune time. Alex Laughlin is your Gator Nationals champion. Let's look at his journey to Victory Lane. They really picked up the pace. Also see Johnny Gray hanging out down there on the starting line. Johnny, just want to let you know if you want to get back involved with Pro Stock, we'd love to have you. Love to have you. It's a big thing, man. Think Laughlin, I definitely think the biggest news of the day has to be the natural going out in round one again and to the same driver. This time not a red light, but Kyle, the Kid Chaos, Koretsky beat heads up with a good drag race, Jeg Coughlin Jr. in competition. And folks, that opens up the points and you see some things twist though the same players are involved. So what do the points look like? Jason Line is number one. Number two is Erica Enders, only two points behind. Jeggy is third in points, now 34 behind after two round one losses. And Alex Laughlin is fourth with Matt Hartford rounding out the top five. We've got a tight points battle in Pro Stock right now. Definitely looks like it's going to be a fight between Line, Enders, and Coughlin going into the remainder of the season unless Alex Laughlin is able to have a great run here late in the season. It's happened in drag racing before. You never know. Pro Stock Motorcycle, I think, is the most compelling class right now of all the pro categories. I think it's more compelling than Top Fuel, Funny Car, Pro Stock. I think the action is right here in Pro Stock Motorcycle. Matt Smith, he wins the Gator Nationals and you have him showing once again stellar performance. His own bike that he rents out to Scotty Polachek performed well Sunday though going out in the semifinals but Nonetheless, they've won a U.S. Nationals with Scotty, 200 miles per hour uh, with Scotty, and their performance is there to make a run for the championship for sure. But that championship battle 
if they have one, it hasn't been decided whether the NHRA is going to declare that this season is going to be a season for the pro stock motorcycle bikes, that they are in fact going to have a championship. I hope they declare it. We have such a tight points battle right now. It is, again, I think the most compelling one that we have, honestly. Why? Well, let's take a look at the points. So, currently right now, what we're looking at is Matt Smith first, Scotty Polachek second, 21 points behind. Andrew Hines, starting the Harley representation, is 28 points behind. Angel Sampay in fourth is 48 points behind. And Eddie Craywick is 64 points behind in the points. And the fact of the matter is, all of that can change within a single event easily if the top goes out early and the person in fourth or fifth does well. It's tight. I love points battles like this, and I find it fascinating that 2020, with everything that we've been through and no countdown and going back to an old point system for this year, in effect, that we've got these storylines in the points. It's very cool to see it happening in 2020. In conclusion, it was a great Gator Nationals for the 51st edition, and I want to say that it was touching and moving for me to finally be there. I am humbled that I was able to be there and be there in the capacity that I was operating as, uh, helping the Leverage uh, Racing Team as their PR individual, helping strutmasters.com with more exposure and being able to rub elbows with drivers and crew members and be there on the starting line and get footage and enjoy the races. I have wanted to go to the Gators for years since a little kid knowing just the significance of it and when they decided to say that they weren't going to race it in March I kind of wondered if we I would get back if I'd have that opportunity again so I'm humbled to have been able to be at the 51st Gator Nationals to cover it and to put this video to you all I hope you enjoy it uh, give please a like subscribe to the channel and look forward to more Footage from Monday Morning Racer in the world of motorsports and definitely a St. Louis in review on the Midwest Nationals. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.